Thank you. I was born at St. Mike's Hospital, about two blocks away. Nice homecoming. And give them a round, guys. Give them a nice. Senator Soil, welcome. I tell you what, I'm, uh, you know, I salute you for coming to Toronto to, you know, try to pry some of the most brilliant and innovative minds in Canada. So, I mean, I, if I can just give Toronto a plug here, stay here, please, we need you. Uh, I was going to say, I, you I, I'm taking. I know, I know, it's <laughs> Larry. You and my carry-on baggage on the way home. It's Larry. Well, I, I, I want to say that um, I have to be selfish with my questions. I happen to be a uh, two-time mayoral candidate here in the great city of Toronto. I thought I recognized you. Yeah, great uh -huh. to see you, sir. And, um, and so I have to be a little selfish with my question in case I don't get a chance to to get to ask you this personally, okay. uh, one on one. Um, what was one? What was one of the? I would say the toughest learning curves that you had to endure after getting elected. And two, if I may add a uh, second piece to it, you know your campaign ha was really grassroots. I mean, really connected to the to the to the people. I mean, you spoke in their dialect and their voice, and it just it showed up in the polls. How, after getting the job, were you able to maintain that relationship oh. where you can keep that, keep authentic and a genuine interest of the people? Oh, beautiful. Both of those questions are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So the first one, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of things you learned. Now, I was a pretty keen observer of City Hall before I ran for office, and the number one thing that surprised me uh, in my first term was the number of times people ask me what was the number one thing that surprised you, uh, which is by far the most common question I ever used to get. I don't get it anymore in the second term, which is good. But probably, I mean, I always say that the thing that surprised me the most is how little surprised me. That even as an observer from the outside, I felt like I actually had a good idea of what was going on. And sometimes when City Hall made a ridiculous, inexplicable decision, in the back of my head I'd be thinking, well, maybe they had access to information I don't have or they were thinking it away that I wasn't thinking. And I learned that sometimes that's true, but by and large, usually they just made a ridiculous, inexplicable, stupid decision, um, <laughs> which does happen. So I just realized how late it is. I gotta go into lightning round here and answer these last three questions real fast. Um, anyway, so the number one thing though is how to work with council, right? Every single member of council is also elected. We don't have political parties. Every one of my ideas has to uh, get the approval of at least eight of them, and every one of them is uh, a great Democrat, uh, and you know they've got their job to do. So working with them, I think, was a really core issue. The second part, I think you've heard it already, which is just keep keep going out to people, keep looking for their expertise, keep talking to them, and never ever ever worry about re-election. I always say, I always said in my first term, I want to be the best one-term mayor. Calgary's ever had. Wow. I'm going to do the right thing, wow. and if people want to get rid of me at the end of that term, they're welcome to do so. So now I say I want to be the best two-term mayor <laughs> Calgary has ever had, uh, and I'll just keep doing that.